Hi everyone, uh, thanks for checking out this video. Um, so most of my videos on my channel are like tutorials on um, how to how to write some kind of program to do some kind of simulation or something, or other kinds of like programming tutorials. But this video is gonna be more of a uh, like career advice video. So I'm gonna try to answer a question that I've been asked a couple times, um, kind of like a, a common question, which is how to get into the bioinformatics field if you don't have any biology background. Um, and I said bioinforma bioinformatics here, but really I mean like this general field of like bioinformatics, um, computational biology, sy systems biology, uh, mathematical bi biology, whatever you want to call it, but like quantitative biology. Um, but I just said bioinformatics here to keep it simple. But yeah, so there's this question of like, there, there's like a misconception that you can only work in this field if you have... Um, like an actual biology background, like if you, if you have a bachelor's degree in biology and have done like experimental work before, but this is actually not true. And um, it, it is possible to get into the field if you're coming from a quantitative background with no biology experience, or I would even say, even if you're not coming from any quantitative background, even if you had some kind of totally different um, major in college, you could still teach yourself like enough quantitative stuff to break into the field without, uh, without needing any kind of like degree in a quantitative field or in biology. But um, yeah, the, the target audience of this video is like people who have some other kind of uh, quantitative um, academic background. Like maybe, maybe you um, studied computer science or like math or an engineering field or uh, like physics or something. Or in my case, I actually studied economics. Um, but yeah, if you're coming from like one of these other um, quantitative fields, this is going to be a video about like what steps you can take to um, get your foot in the door in the uh, bioinformatics or um, computational biology field. Um, okay, so I'll just tell you guys a bit about like my own background first. Um, so I actually majored, like I said, in economics in college, which um, it sounds like totally different. And people, a lot of people think that like studying economics is like studying like um, supply and demand and like inflation and like unemployment and stuff like that and it kind of is in like the introductory courses but what once you get into like the higher level courses at least where I was studying it um at my university it really is like um it really is a lot of like math courses so actually even though it seems totally different like a lot of the like math stuff I was doing um in my economics courses in college is actually like the same kind of math that I'm now doing um working in a uh in a computational biology lab. So like the math of it does kind of carry over, but um, yeah, I'll just, uh, yeah, note that there. And then I also had a minor in um, computer science and math, it was like a joint minor. So I was taking a lot of like, um, yeah, so, some like basic computer science courses um, and then some like math courses. And then um, in college, I actually didn't take any uh, natural science courses at all. Um, yeah, the only like biology course I took that was college level was actually AP Biology, which I took when I was in high school. But when I was actually in college, I um, didn't take any uh, natural science courses. And if I could go back, I mean, if I could go back and do things differently, I would have definitely like taken more um, biology courses. But at the time, I didn't know that I was going to be going into this field, so I, I didn't really, I didn't exactly know what I wanted to do. I just knew that I like kind of like the uh, data science, like quantitative modeling, stuff like that. Um, so if you're watching this and you're still in college and you want to go into bioinformatics, then I would say like yes, you should be taking biology courses. But if you're if you've already gone to college and you didn't take any biology, then I'll just say that there's still hope and you still can um, get into the bioinformatics field even without having any uh, biology background. But if you still have time, I, I would recommend um, yeah, taking some biology courses. Um, but okay, so assuming, you, assuming you're done with college and you didn't take any biology and you took some kind of like other quantitative field and you now want to get into um, bioinformatics, I'm going to give you guys a couple steps for like how to get your foot in the door um, for that, kind of following in, in like what I did uh, to get my first um, bioinformatics job. So the first step is just gonna be um, to learn Python. And I'll say, or like, or also possibly R or MATLAB, although I'm gonna say that Python is gonna be the best one to learn, um, just cause 
I think Python is like the most in demand for what um, labs are like looking for uh, and that they'll have like work for you to do. Yeah, I think Python's like the most in demand, but if for some reason you like really don't want to learn Python, then like learning R or MATLAB can also be um, acceptable and still like possibly find some work doing that too. And um, there's a there's a lot that there's a lot to Python. Like there's a lot of um, different things you can do with Python. So I'll say like you want to focus specifically on learning like the data analysis applications of Python. So you want to learn like um, like the NumPy library, um, pandas, um, scipy, stuff like that. Kind of like the uh, the data science, data analysis libraries. And if you can learn some like machine learning too, like um, PyTorch or something, that would also be like an extra plus because that's a uh, there's a lot of demand for that kind of stuff now. But yeah, I would just say like, yeah, just start by like learning Python and you, you don't even need to be like a pro at Python to get your foot in the door with like your first job. But I would just say like learn enough of it and learn to do like data analysis in Python like to the extent that you can be useful um, to a biologist. Uh, that's just all I'd say with that. And it's a continuous process. You want to like start learning it and don't stop learning it. Just just continue improving at it um, over time. But you don't need to be a pro like before you start um, looking for a job. You just need to kind of know enough to be useful to somebody. Okay, so that's, that's step one. So step two, um, this one might sound like kind of weird if you've never looked for, um, if you've never looked for a job like in this setting before. But step two is gonna be to cold email a bunch of professors And basically you want to cold email as many professors as you can um, and just ask them if they need a computer programmer. So I know this sounds kind of weird because, um, yeah, this, this isn't how you would normally go about looking for a job. And I would even say maybe this is like kind of like um, this idea that in the old days, if you want to get a job, you just like, you just like march right into some business and ask for the boss and like, give them a firm handshake or something, and then they'd like give you a job. That's kind of this like funny idea that, that we have about how it used to be like in the old days or whatever. But if you're looking for like a research position in academia, like trying to be like a research assistant or something in a lab, then this actually is kind of what you want to do. Um, because for these jobs, like a lot of the time they won't be posted on a job website. It'll be kind of more of like an informal thing where they, they won't like post a job opening and like try to like interview people and hire people for it. It'll be more one of those things where you kind of like hear about an opening through the grapevine and then you just get to know the professor and then they, um, they give you like some research work or something like that. So, so you kind of want to get a job, um, kind of by just asking enough professors if they, if they're looking for someone to do any computer programming work for them. So this was how I got um, my my first ever research job was actually um, in the economics department of the college I went to. So I just cold emailed a bunch of um, economics professors um, asking if they needed a Python programmer. And then um, eventually one of them actually did, um, he did have some programming work he wanted me to do. So um, that's how I got my first like paid um, Python programming job like ever. That This was when I was like a senior in college. And then this is also how I got my foot in the door with the bioinformatics um, field is that I basically did the same thing um, after I'd already graduated from college um, and I, I was trying to get into like bioinformatics. I just cold emailed probably like 50, at, at least like 50 or so professors um, at a couple different colleges just asking if they needed um, a Python programmer. And, um, and yeah, one of them actually said yes and I got um, like a, a paid position uh, doing part-time work in this person's uh, in this person's lab, and um, yeah, it was totally cool because I didn't have any biology background, and they just wanted someone who knew Python, and uh, was able to get a job that way. Um, but I'd say I would say with this, like, if you send out enough cold emails, you're basically guaranteed um, to at least at least get some kind of like unpaid research work. I'll say that if you're lucky, if you're lucky, you might get like a paid position. Um, so I, in my case, I was lucky. I did actually get a paid position where I was like getting paid to uh, work in this lab. Um, but I would say if you get offered like unpaid research work, um, 
that could still be worth it too. Because I know if we think of like an unpaid position, we think of like an unpaid intern like getting coffee for like the boss or something. And no one really wants to do that. You know what I mean? You don't want to be like some unpaid intern doing all the stuff at the office that no one wants to do. But when it comes to like research positions, it's a little bit different than that. It's more like... Um, it's more like you'd be getting to work on like a cool research project in your free time. Um, so it's not like doing horrible work that no one wants to do. It's, it's more like getting to collaborate with a researcher and contribute something to a research project. So I would say think of it like less as like an unpaid um, internship or something and think of it more like, um, like collaborating on like an open source project or something like that. You know what I mean? Or just like working on some kind of like cool project um, in your free time. So I'll say like um, unpaid research um, like might still be worth it. And yeah, it's like when you cold email asking for like research work, um, if you're lucky, you might get something paid. Um, I was lucky, so I got I got an actual like paid job that way. Um, but you're basically guaranteed if you send out enough cold emails to at least get some kind of like unpaid um, volunteer position in a lab where you can kind of collaborate with the researcher on like cool research. And um, this is this can still be worth it. I mean, you'll still be like building up your skills and um, learning and like getting your foot in the door. And actually I had an unpaid position too um, that it was kind of like a side position that I did in addition to the paid position. So actually like after college, I, I actually was working in two different labs um, one paid and one unpaid, and uh, I enjoyed both of them. I thought they were both pretty cool, and um, I found the un found the unpaid one to still be worth it because uh, I was still working on some cool research, and I could still ask the professor for a recommendation letter um, when I needed it. And then it was still it was still cool to like begin to learn about um, about the field. Um, okay, so once you've gotten some kind of like research position, whether it's paid or unpaid or, or what, um, even if it's just like a side project doing some, maybe a couple hours of work per week on some project, um, the next step is going to be the hardest step. So this is the part where you need to start catching up on the biology. And this is going to be tough, but um, I'm just going to say here, like, teach yourself the specific biology topic you're working on. So, I mean, at some point, if you don't have any biology background to get into bioinformatics, like at some point you do need to catch up on the biology. And I think it's easier to do this once you already have a research project you're working on. Even if it's just some like um, side project you're doing a couple hours a week, you'll at least have some biology topic you can like begin diving into. And it's easier this way because if you try to just catch up on biology, like in general, then there's just going to be too much of it. You know what I mean? I mean, there's like cell biology, there is like virology, microbiology, there's like even like zoology, like plant science, you know what I mean? So there's just too many subfields of biology that you, you really can't catch up on all of them. But if you're working on a research project, at that point, you can actually like narrow it down to a specific topic that you can um, begin diving into. And then you can at least you can at least have some idea of like what topic you shouldn't even like start catching up on. And once you're working on it, yeah, once you're working on, on like a specific topic, then it becomes a little bit easier. And I'll say from this point, um, it's good to like uh, read books and um, papers. And especially review papers, I'll even, yeah, I'll even show you guys an example here. Um, so what you want to do is, this is actually a review paper that I wrote. And you want to you want to find like a review paper on the topic that you're working on. And you want to first of all read all of the review paper. And then you want to go to the end and see what papers are cited by the review paper. And then also go through and read all these papers. And if you're thinking this sounds hard, well... It is hard. It is hard to get caught up on all the biology and especially to get to the point where you're like actually knowledgeable enough about it to actually make some contribution to research. So it is hard, but it's also um, like if you're trying to get into this field, like you should enjoy doing this. You should enjoy learning about the field. You know what I mean? Because like if, if you're not, if you don't enjoy doing this, then like, why are you doing it? You know what I mean? So it is hard, but it should also be enjoyable if you actually want to be like 
um, working in bioinformatics. So yeah, you, sh you just want to do a lot of reading, a lot of like catching up on uh, all these papers. So yeah, I'll say that like, yeah, reading papers is very important for like getting caught up on whatever research topic you're working on. Um, I'll say like also um, YouTube can be a pretty good resource. Um, say also like Khan Academy. Um, Khan Academy is at least good for like kind of the basics. If you want to get a good review of like um, high school cell biology and stuff like that, Khan Academy is like really great for that. Um, and I'll also say too, um, ask questions at your lab, um, assuming that you've already been able to like find some kind of like research position. Um, scientists usually enjoy talking about their research. So if you ask questions, I think people will be like happy to answer your questions and happy to like explain things to you. Um, so if you're ever confused about something, you can ask for like more details about it and that'll kind of help you, um, help you get caught up on this, on this topic you're working on. But yeah, see, out of all these, these are all important, but probably the most important is the like reading research papers one. That's really how you get caught up on uh, like the, the cutting edge um, developments of, of some topic you're working on. Um, so this is the hardest step. Yeah, getting caught up on the biology is the hardest step. And this, just like with the learning programming, like this is also a continuous process. So you never really finish doing it. You're always um, learning more and just continuing to... Uh, continuing to teach yourself more about um, the field you're working in. Um, and yeah, so so the last step I'm going to give you guys is just keep doing this until you're ready to um, like take the next big step in your career. So I'll just say for this one, like, uh, sorry, keep working and learning um, until you're ready for um, I guess either like grad school or um, another job, you know what I mean? So it's at some point, like your first position is probably going to be like a stepping stone. So in my case, I, I worked in a bioinformatics lab kind of doing like Python programming work. Um, and I did that for, I guess, yeah, probably about like a, a year or so. And I did that until I was ready um, to start applying to grad schools and apply to like PhD programs and stuff. Um, and at that point, I'd built up enough, like, background knowledge and experience that I was ready to at least um, apply to some grad schools. And, um, yeah, so so maybe that'll be, like, the right career path for you, too. Or if you're not interested in grad school, you want to at least, like, stay at this research position, like, long enough until you're ready to um, kind of take the next step and get, like, a full-time, um, like, a full-time job or something in the bioinformatics field. And by that point, you'll have, like, you'll have the experience, you'll have, like, hopefully, like, some kind of, like, um, programming portfolio with the projects you've worked on. You'll have um, more of the biology background knowledge, even if you don't have, like, an official degree or something. But, yeah, so this is basically how I got my foot in the door with um, the Max field, even not having any um, undergrad biology background. And uh, this is only, like, one possible, one possible path to take. Um, so I'm not saying this is, like, the only way to do it, but this is at least what worked for me. This is how I was able to um, go from like a quantitative background with no biology experience to um, to getting my foot in the door with bioinformatics. And I'll say this is pretty common. Um, I think in the bioinformatics field, um, probably about half of the people come from a biology background and then they have to learn like the quantitative side of things. And probably the other half comes from um, a quantitative background and they have to learn the biology side of things. So people come from all kinds of different um, fields. And if you're coming from like a quantitative field, then you need to get caught up on the biology, but um, but that's that's at least doable. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's not that crazy. And a lot of people um, do enter the field from like a quantitative background and, ha and have to just learn the biology uh, on their own. But but it's definitely doable. It's definitely, uh, it's definitely a feasible career path if you're interested in it. Um, okay guys, so this was just like a kind of like a career advice video. If anyone has any like questions or anything, um, just let me know in the comments and I'll try to, uh, try to answer them. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching and, uh, see you next time.